good afternoon everyone and welcome yet again to the release of the pitch medicine advertising report for 2023 a special round of welcome to my good friend client for many many decades now mr bharat puri for having kindly consented to come here this afternoon and do the honors for us by launching the report and sharing his thought on what we all should be doing to succeed even more than we are also in addition to thanking the abp group and avinash for supporting this reports launch event year after year i must also thank the large number of advertisers who keep talking to me on different occasions and who look forward to receiving this report and use the pointers provided in this report to plan their own media approach in the financial year to follow now some of you have told us that why do you wait till february to bring out this report why can't you bring it out in the last week of december or first week of january well we want to wait till you know the actual consumption figures of different media are available to us and then we take about 3 weeks to kind of process all this data so it does take a little bit of time now coming to this year's report all of us know that we have been through 3 years of extreme uncertainty 2020 covid 2021 covid 2022 again we had a covid wave 3 in the beginning of the year then we had the russia ukraine war which has left at least the western world markets in distress and impacted many parts of the world because of inflation in raw materials and then came the funding winter which has left many startups in india in serious distress and even caused a little hole in our adex so really if this is not a vuka world what is last year at this time we did not anticipate the war which broke out about two weeks later and we forecast a growth of 20% in 2022 guess what despite all the setbacks that the world and india has faced our gdp grew at 6.8% and indian adex in our estimate last year grew by 21% in absolute terms adex has grown from 74000 crores to 89800 crores a gain of a significant 15000 crores the second highest gain in the last two decades this was also the second consecutive year that indian adex registered more than a 20% growth after a dismal year 20 when the pandemic hit us and knocked virtually 3 years out of adex's life it is significant of course to know and many of us know this very well that as much as 58% of total adex growth has been contributed by digital which has grown by as much as 35% but traditional media's role and performance in india unlike in other parts of the world is no less noteworthy it continues to grow year on year and has grown by 14% last year 
which is the second highest growth rate in the last seven years. So, in spite of two COVID years and the Russia-Ukraine war last year, Indian ADEX has grown by 33% over these last three years. If this is not resilience, what is? A quarter-wise analysis of ADEX numbers for the last four years shows the volatility that our ADEX has gone through. Last year started off very poorly because of the emergence of COVID wave three in the last week of December. And in February, the Russia-Ukraine war broke out. But quarter two and quarter three were very good and registered very high growth rates over corresponding quarters in previous years. But again, quarter four was a little soft with most advertisers reporting a poor Diwali compared to two previous years. And therefore, quarter four of 22, for the first time, ended up actually being lower than quarter four of 21. In our estimate, if not for the slowdown in quarter one, that we face because of COVID, ADEX in 22 would have registered a growth rate of a phenomenal 29%. Quarter two grew substantially by 82% and quarter three by a more modest 24%. From a historical perspective, last year witnessed the second highest growth in the last one decade as this seven year review shows you. Now, compared to Indian ADEX's growth of 21%, global ADEX, according to WALK, grew by just 8%, similar to the CAGR of about 7% that it had established over the previous five years. But what is more significant is that the top 11 nations of the world, you could call them the advertising capitals of the world, US, China, Japan, Germany, France, Australia, Canada, Brazil, India, and Italy, which account collectively for almost 70% of global ADEX, grew in 22 by only 1%, only 1%. So compare that to our 21% growth. US, of course, continues to be the biggest advertising market, contributing 33% to global ADEX, followed by China, contributing 14%. India, despite all our growth rate, unfortunately continues to be a minor player on global ADEX stage, with a share of only 1.2%, no doubt, the strengthening of the US dollar has played a role in subduing our share. A medium-wise comparison of shares across global ADEX and Indian ADEX shows up very substantial variations. Whilst digital share in Indian ADEX is at 38%, for the globe, it's at 68%. Outdoor, radio, and cinema are more or less at par at sub 4, 3, and 1% respectively. Print, on the other hand, is where there is a sharp difference. In India, print boasts of a 21% share, whereas in the globe, it's just 
Whilst TV is the number two medium both in India and globally, there is a substantial difference in scale. 34% share in India, but only 20% in the globe. So print and TV are, it would seem, losing out to digital in global ADEX much more than they are in India. Yes, you heard it right. Digital now, according to this report, is the number one medium in India having overtaken TV. TV share has declined <coughs> from 38% in 21 to 34% in 22, and digital share increase from 34% to 38% now. Digital, in fact, has doubled its size from its pre-COVID level of about 15,000 crores to 34,000 crores now. TV, the largest medium till 21, has grown by 9%, much below our forecast last year at this time of 14%. Print, the second largest traditional medium, has swung back well and registered a growth of 11%, higher than television, and now stands at more than 90% of pre-COVID levels. Radio also grew by a substantial 17% on in account of increased volume. OH witnessed a massive growth of 68% last year on top of a similar high growth last year and with this two years of high growth has comfortably surpassed its pre-COVID level. Cinema on a very small base and after two years of dismay grew more than 300% but by a mere 400 odd crores, registering a share of only 0.6%. TV, the largest medium till 21, dropped four percentage points last year. Unfortunately, post-COVID, print also is losing its share year on year and now contributes 21% of overall ADEX. Interestingly, print share till 2019 has always been more than 30%. The combined share of minor media like cinema, radio, and OH has gone up from 5 to 7% last year, driven mainly by outdoor. If we look at the data category-wise, now remember here we look at only traditional media and that too excluding OH and cinema because only for TV, print and radio are reliable numbers available. We see that whilst FMCG continues to be the largest contributor with a 32% share, its share has been steadily declining from 38 in 2020 to 34 in 21 and 32 in 22. E-commerce, dominated by Amazon and Flipkart, has been steadily growing in share and has now moved up from 4.9% in 2019 to 14% in 2022, indicating that this is a mature category and has no funding issues. The education category, which was growing rapidly thanks to EdTech, has now lost share on account of funding issues and is down from 9.2 to 7.6%, having been overtaken by auto 
So the four top categories, FMCG, commerce, auto, and education, which had moved up collectively to 65% from 52% in 2019, have marginally declined to 62%, but still command a very dominant position in ADEX. Shares of most other categories seem to be constant. A list of top 50 advertisers along with their estimates of spends range indicates that their dominance in ADEX is reducing. The top 50 now account for 38% of ADEX in 21 compared to 30% now. So quite a dramatic drop of 8 percentage points. Indian MSMEs are fast waking up to the profit-making capability of branding and advertising's role in creating a brand. Estimates reveal that 40% of today's ADEX is contributed by such MSMEs and they are gearing up for more. We see investments in Indian startups plunged in 2022 as economic uncertainty and poor liquidity affected their ability to continue to raise funds. And its impact is clearly evident on such brands' advertising spends. Most of the startups reduced their advertising expenditure and many completely stopped. We now have only 11 startups in our list versus 15 in 21. The contribution of top 10 to total ADEX 2 dropped from 18% to 10%. Whilst HUL continues to top the list, Reckitt, Reliance, Dream11, and Mondelez are the other four in the top five list. Amongst the, this list, Reliance and Mondelez are the new players in our top five list. Television and digital continue to be the favorites of top advertisers accounting for 87% of their total spends. The next five brands in our elite list are Amazon, PNG, Baiju Still, Maruti Suzuki, and Google. We have as many as 14 new advertisers in our top 50 list this year. Winnie, Misho, Flipkart, Tata Digital, Winzo Games, and Titan are some of the new names that make it to our list. In our estimate, as many as 16 players have gained rank in pecking order, and 19 players have seen a drop in their ranks, reflecting the volatile nature of the year that has been. Among those who moved up many ranks are Coke, Godrej Consumer, Samsung, LIC, Pepsi, and L'Oreal. Those who lost rank are ITC, PhonePay, Glaxo, Colgate, and Cred. Taking a deeper look at individual media, let's take a look at digital first since it's now the number one medium. As I told you, digital adex has grown by 35% and remember this is on top of a 50% growth the previous year. I must clarify that in our digital adex estimates, we recognize digital spends of those who you and I would in the normal course call advertisers. 
Google and Facebook get a very substantial portion of their advertising revenue from a very large number of guys with very small spends, and we do not include these in our estimates. This is consistent with our handling of print estimates where we do not include spends on classifieds, obituaries, and the like. A seven-year review of digital shows that it has grown from 7,300 crores to 34,405 crores. In all these years, the seven years, it has grown by about 30% or more each year, except in the COVID year 2020. In spite of all this growth, as I told you, digital adx trails behind global adx. Digital share in global adx is 68%. China's digital share in their ADEX is highest at a dramatic 84%. Looking at quarterly trends, here again growth in quarter 1 and quarter 4 was muted. Quarter 2 saw phenomenal growth of 146%. In terms of share, for the first time in many years, quarter four's share was only 29% compared to earlier years when it was 37% and 39%, telling us that digital adex, after all, is also not immune to an economic slowdown. Video social display, e-commerce, and search drive digital adx. The advertiser's obsession and preference for an audio-visual medium is reinforced if you combine linear TV, which recorded 30,000 crores, and digital video alone from the digital pie, which recorded 10,000 crores, so totaling to 41,000 crores, which means 45.6% of our nearly 90,000 crore adex is spent by advertisers on the audiovisual medium. Social. The second largest contributor grew the most at 45% and increased its share from 20 to 22%. Display has grown more modestly at 19% and has therefore lost 3 percentage share points from 19 to 16. When Google started, it was all about search, but search today is 16% of the market. Coming to television, as I told you, TV has now moved to the number two position in Indian ADEX sweepstakes. TV grew by just 9%, substantially lower than our forecast of 14%. In 22, for the first time, we see a little stress in linear TV and its share has come down from 42% in 2020 to 38% in 2021 and 34% now. Possibly 22 22, television also unfortunately witnessed some of the biggest new age clients beginning to pull back on sponsorship of big ticket shows because of fear of running out of money and on the back of raw material shortages and steep rise in raw material costs which led many advertisers to spend 
advertising money with caution. The festival dominated quarter four, which usually sees a big spike, was missing in 2022. For television, again, quarter one was sluggish, quarter two showed promise on account of the full season of IPL, quarter three seemed buoyant, and quarter four, again, didn't see any resurgence. FMCG, of course, continues to dominate TV addicts in a big way. Compared to the around 30% in total addicts, its dominance in um, FMs, its dominance in TV is about 45%, but here again, it is coming, it has come down from 52% in 2015 to 45 today. Also, FMCG during the year increased their spend by just 7%, lower than overall TV addicts growth of 9% and an all media growth of 21%. E-commerce, which only had a 5% share of TV ADEX, today has a 20% share. Paradoxically, growth of e-commerce has helped a traditional medium. Education, including ed tech, dramatically reduced its TV spends by 24%. EdTech accounts for most of this decrease and because of this education is now relegated to the fourth position with just a 4% share. Auto has taken over education as the third most important category. In terms of genre, Hindi GEC continues to lead the pack in terms of TV addicts but significantly last year, more and more advertisers use more of second line GEC, indicating that efficiency and not impact, as we generally call it, is top of their mind. Sports clearly is now getting the attention of more and more advertisers and despite very high CPRPs is finding favor with many advertisers. The number of advertisers on sport increased from 372 in 21 to 473 in 2022. My mind goes back to the 90s when I believe on cricket there used to be not more than 25 advertisers. Among the regional satellite channels, Tamil continues to rule the roost, followed by Telugu, Marathi, Bengali, Kannada, and Malayalam in that order. Hindi movies also continue to find favor amongst large advertisers to drive cost efficiency in their plans. But English movies, niche channels, infotainment, and kids genre seem to be losing their relevance. Taking a deeper look at print, print addicts grew last year, as I told you, by 11% to reach a value of about 18,470 crores and is now at 92% of pre-COVID levels. The newspaper industry saw an increase of 11%, but I must confess our estimate at last, last year at this time was 13%. What strikes me is that although the recently released ABC circulation numbers 
show that for most publications, circulation has not reached pre-pandemic levels. This fact does not seem to have daunted advertisers to print to use print any less, since both volume and value have gone up by 15% and 11% respectively. Print in India continues to surprise, if not shock, global print barons and defy global adex trends. Because as I mentioned, globally, Vox estimate of print is 4%, whereas in India, it has a 21% share. Significantly, in China, print is virtually zero. In terms of absolute ad revenue too, uh, print followed other me media and it had more than 5,000 crores in each of the two quarters of H2. H2 was good for print, H2 contributing 58% of total revenue. In terms of categories, Though education degrew marginally, it emerged as the largest category in print. So it seems to have been preferred by education over television and has overtaken FMCG, which degrew by 8%. Two other large categories, clothing, fashion and jewelry, and household durables also grew substantially by over 15%. In terms of languages, English publications gained the most in terms of ad volumes and grew by as much as 19%. Hindi publications, of course, continue to dominate, but English and Marathi are the next two on the list. English publications have almost reached the 2019 levels of volume using price in our view as a mechanism to attract more advertising. For one reason or another, Oriya, Bengali, Punjabi, Assamese and Urdu publications continue to get very poor advertising support. Now let's look at OH. OH in 22 became a 3,600 crore medium and grew at 68%, registering a 4% share. The Indian OH market with a growth rate of 68% and share of 4%, has made one of the strongest rebounds and is only the second traditional medium after TV to surpass its pre-COVID level. Again, looking at it quarter-wise, 800 to 900 crores came in each of the first three quarters. Quarter four, surprisingly, was a bumper quarter, unlike the way it was for other mediums, and revenue crossed 1,000 crore milestone for the first time. <coughs> the top five categories contribute 64% of total OH, 56% with real estate, 19%, sorry, real estate contributing 19%, followed by retail, FMCG, and consumer services. Almost every category registered substantial growth except lubricants and energy. Radio also grew noteworthy by 17%, as against our 10% projection, 
and managed to cross the 2,000 crore mark and achieved 90% of its pre-COVID level like print. Ad volumes in radio again increased by a good 38%, but ad X increased only by 17%, indicating that radio stations were not able to command their earlier established unit rates. Looking at it quarter-wise, surprisingly, quarter four was the best quarter for radio. So real estate has emerged as the largest category in radio, pipping FMCG, followed by e-commerce and BFSI. Lastly, coming to cinema, after two years of degrowth due to COVID-19, cinema did not quite recover. Whilst it grew by 317%, the actual increase because of its low base was only about 400 crores. Unfortunately, cinema reached only its halfway mark with the ADEX number at 568 crores compared to over a thousand crores that it did in 2019. This is possibly due to the lackluster performance of many new Hindi movie launches. Now it's time for me to share with you our growth forecast for 23. As the new year sets in, we are reminded of an old Godrej shaving cream ad of the late 80s, which ended with the one bright spot in a man's morning. India is certainly the bright spot in a gloomy, uncertain world. So says not the Indian government, not a patriotic, ever optimistic Indian, but the global CEOs of almost all reputed consultancies around the world. Having said that, in today's world, every country is interconnected with all other countries because of trade and commerce, and therefore India is bound to get affected by the global gloom. Because of that, our estimates for growth in 23 is a bit subdued at 16%, compared to the 21% growth achieved in 22. For perspective, Vox forecast for global ADEX in 2023 is a growth of only 3%. With a 16% growth rate, Indian ADEX will cross the landmark 1 lakh crore number and settle at 1,4230. We expect traditional ADEX also to grow at a good rate of 10% in 23. With this growth, of course, share of digital ADEX will continue to lead and now be almost 10 percentage share points higher than TV, with digital at 41% and TV at 32%. Digital will continue to be driven mainly by the very large number of SMBs that use digital to drive their sales. On the other hand, the number of advertisers on TV have not been growing and are only at around 10 to 11,000. In fact, the number of advertisers on TV degrew marginally from 11,000 to 10,500. So, why do we say 16 factors? Some of the key factors that will contribute to our growth are the upcoming major cricketing tournaments such as the new WIPL 
and the old IPA, IPL, Asia Cup, and ICC Cricket World Cup, new categories and new advertisers that are constantly emerging in India, organic growth coming from the largest contributor to ADEX, FMCG, now that inflation has abated, e-commerce marketing continuing its push, many new launches planned in the automobile sector, and recovery in print, radio, and cinema. On the other hand, we recognize that we will have tailwinds coming from, oh, in fact, we recognize that we will have tailwinds coming from growing consumer confidence, moderating inflation, rapidly rising SMB businesses who are getting more and more ambitious by the day, and complete recovery from COVID. But we will get pulled down by headwinds from a global slowdown and low capital inflow to startups. ADEX should add over 14,000 crores in 2023. We expect in India no medium to degrow, unlike in global ADEX where TV, print and radio are expected to further degrow in absolute terms. But we do expect that 60% of this growth of 14,000 crores will go to digital, 20% to TV, and 12% to print. We do expect digital growth rate to now slow down to 25% mainly because of its high base, and print and TV both to grow at 9% each, but outdoor at 12% on a much larger base. With this growth, all mediums will cross their pre-COVID levels except cinema. With these expected changes, digital will further increase its share from 38 to 41 percent, and TV and print will lose two percentage points each to settle at 32 percent and 19 percent. OH radio and cinema share will remain more or less unchanged. Finally, as usual, we would like to end this report with some advice for my advertiser friends. First, I would like to remind them to please use advertising budgets to build brands, not buy sales in the short term. Building brands, we feel, is the only way you can build a sustainable, profitable company in the consumer business. And remember, investors are now sharply focused on companies' future monetization ability. Also remember that mass media is the most cost-efficient way of building brands in the medium to long term. A second piece of advice is to use digital to augment GRP's reach and frequency or whatever other parameters you use to light TV viewers to ensure you don't underservice them. Whilst advertisers seem to be agreed that TV continues to offer the best brand building capabilities, because of a combination of creative and media factors, light TV users are underserved and heavy TV viewers are overserved in a typical TV plan. And this needs to be corrected or balanced. Our third piece of advice is to be constantly on the lookout for opportunities 
that mediums like outdoor radio and cinema constantly keep coming up with because these provide a good opportunity to offer to launch new brands variants and test market them in limited geographies especially for brands with limited budgets these mediums can offer you high impact and reasonable efficiency at low outlays and our final piece of advice there is no alternative to getting your creative strategy right and arrive at a creative strategy that is sustainable we notice that a lot of newer businesses focus only on a witty and wacky creative idea that at best can last a few weeks so thank you very much ladies and gentlemen for listening to me